Hey everybody, how's it going? It's time, part six of how to port a chainsaw. Today we're gonna grind, finally. I know you guys have been saying, when are you gonna grind? I'm gonna grind today. We're gonna start on the transfer ports and we will continue, we'll do it port by port to keep it simple and straightforward. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what I like about these transfers and, and what I propose to change. And uh, I'm actually gonna grind on my workbench today just because the lighting is better over here, I don't recommend you guys grind on your workbench. Um, chips go flying and they, they can get into things. I've moved everything and anything that could get chips in it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug this up and put it on the other bench. But uh, just be aware, these chips will fly and they're gonna get everywhere and into everything. So, um, but we gotta get the shots, right guys? Uh, I have really good lighting here. Uh, I'm going to set up a white backdrop and uh, a high powered spotlight and we're going to get as much light into that cylinder as we can and I'm going to grind on film and uh, this is going to be exciting. Now, um, before you get going, uh, I'm, not, I'm not one of those safety guys that's going to harp at you but I, uh, I always wear hearing protection when I'm doing stuff like this. Um, years of having loud, loud jobs and motorcycles and that has really taken its toll on my hearing. So for you younger guys, uh, be aware it don't, it, your, your ears are like rubber when you're younger, but a few good, a few good, uh, days in a loud environment and you can do damage that you're not walking away from. So anyways, that's the Tin Man safety round, uh, ear and eye protection, I would say is a must both equally. Uh, you never get anything in your eye till it's Sunday and uh, you're almost on a cylinder and then bing and then you have to go in and tell your wife you need to go to the hospital. So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to get us all set up and we are going to start grinding. Just give me a second here, guys. There's our transfer ports. Like I've said before, they're not a terrible design. They're quite large. Um, they're a nice curved uh shape i'm just going to try and get rid of some of these boogers you can see i'm just going to call them boogers like welding boogers you can see casting flash in there and the plating's gone over it you, you can see it's just you know it's not the nicest in there i'm going to do a little smoothing of it and you guys can see on film i'm going to get you guys set up and i'm going to do one side and then i'll do the other side okay friends let's get this party started as long as I could keep you in frame here, we're laughing. Now I have a little tub of cutting oil here. That's what I use as a lubricant. You use whatever works for you. Um, your mileage may, may vary. Like I said, this is just how I do it, guys. And uh, let's do this. Okay. Now those first couple of passes um, are going to be sometimes a little rough, a little chattery. You got to get through the plating. Now this this cylinder appears to have very good hard plating in it. I'm not surprised. I'm going to turn my speed up a little bit. This tool's chattering. Okay, I got you guys in a little closer here. Try and keep the chips off my phone. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
See, I'm just blending that in. Again guys, this takes practice. You just you just gotta stick with it. Find tooling you like, find a position you like to grind at. If you work with your hands, this you'll probably pick this up pretty quick. Um, this is all about hand-eye coordination, really. Can you guys hear it's a little more tinny sounding? I'm getting into the plating. Gonna dip my tool again. The hardest part is getting going. Once you get it going, it's, uh, you just kind of get into the groove. And again, I'm just holding the cylinder with my right hand, and uh, just laying on the bench top. I'm just trying to make the bottom of the straps for as straight as I can. It doesn't really matter, but um, it matters to me. <laughs> How about that? Just squaring off this corner a little bit. Okay, I'm going to dump the chips. Let's have a look-see. I hope you guys can see what's going on here. I'm just going to dump the chips, or I'm going to blow them out with my air compressor. Just give me a second here, guys. Keep your cylinders clean um, so you can see what you're doing. You guys see what's going on in here? Okay. Here's the stock one again. Okay, there's your stock. There's your stock cylinder or your stock transfer. Here's what I've done. Now I'm I'm just creating a smooth path for the air to come out of the bottom end. Okay, let's continue. Get this set back up here. I actually enjoy trying to get the shots for you guys. Um, it's kind of fun. <laughs> Uh, tedious, but I like it. Um, the finished product, the finished product is what it's all about. Okay. Now 
Now guys, I already missed my line. I decided to just keep going. Um, I don't know. I just port by feel. I look at I look at the transfers and I uh, I just decide what the air is going to do. I don't know. That's what we're doing here. What's the air going to do? How can we make this thing rip? Now, one thing I'm going to say to be aware of is how much material you have on the other side. Keep an eye. Don't go... I mean, you could go deep, but be aware of how thick you think that material is because if you blow through, uh, you're either JV welding the cylinder, which um, that wouldn't be my favorite thing to do, or you're buying a new cylinder. Again, I'm trying to make these corners match as good as I can. See that? So now we got a nice smooth wrap. I'm just I'm trying to make it round. Not that harsh square corner that you find. Okay, let's blow this out again and see where we're at. Check your work often. Check your work often. Take breaks. Um, what do we got here, folks? Okay, now we could do a little cleanup work on that, but I'm pretty happy with where it's at. We now have a smooth transition. My Mark 1 checking finger tells me we have a smooth path. Now look at the stock one. Stock. Tin manized. Okay, look at the difference. This air has to go around the corner. Okay, now... Some people don't do this, and th and that's fine. But I I uh, I don't know. I like a smooth transfer. I'm gonna keep going here, guys. I'm gonna pause you for a little bit, and I'll jump in and out. So I'm gonna go in here and grind on this. Let's see if we can capture this on film. I'm gonna move this back just a hair. Set my light up here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to work I'm going to work this center divider just a little bit. This is where different size tooling This is where different size tooling and that really helps you out. Because there's not a lot of room in here, as you guys can see. Uh, it's pretty tight in there. Now the key is, the first transfer is the easy one, you got to make the other one match. So, again, take your time, 
take your time and just all you can do is try and make it in your mind you know try and make the trash for as full air Okay, I'm just touching up that one corner there. Okay, now I'm going to get back into here. Sorry if you guys can't see. Now, I don't want to knife edge this. I want to keep it slightly flat. Okay. hard spot you can hear it I got a little hard spot down in here so I'm just gonna work that spot there you go you're gonna find spots sometimes that aren't consistent that's just the nature of the beast okay turn this off and blow my chips out so you guys can see what I've done in here porting is about restraint guys You want to get as much air movement with as little work as possible. The farther you go, the more trouble you can get into. Okay, you guys see that? I've put a little more shape on this back transfer because as delivered, um, that back transfer needs a little bit of work. Now, I'm just going to go up into the front transfer and I'm just going to blend it as far in as I can get without leaving a huge ridge. Okay. I swear this DeWalt work light was made for porting. Okay. Now I've turned my speed up a little bit because I'm going to be using the tip of my tool. And I'm just going to do my final blending. Also helps if you have good eyes. Um, can move my light back here a little bit. There we go. Helps if you have good eyes too. Um, okay, I'm putting very, very light pressure on the tool. If you push too hard, you're going to load up your tooling with chips. Um, if you have that problem, it's usually a pressure. Now being a big fella, that's one thing I have to learn is um, I tend to muscle things and uh, that's not a good deal for this scenario. a little corner here. See if I can get into the top here. Another thing to be aware of guys is 
aware of where you can get it and where you can't because if you keep grinding in a spot that you can't get back to, you're going to create a big lip in there. Okay. Going over, get doing the final cleanup. Okay, this is a coarse grit sanding drum. I'm just gonna go in here on low, low speed, and I'm just gonna clean up my defects. Okay, get this light in here. Okay, I'm just gonna go in here. I just want to smooth this out and kind of blend any of the ridges. This cylinder had a couple of hard spots in it, probably from getting warm, I imagine. And uh, it left me a couple of ridges, so I'm just going to go in here. This is a coarse, this is a coarse grit sanding drum. I'm just going to go in here and... Just polish up any of the spots I don't like. Again, this probably isn't necessary, but I like uh, consistency in my porting, and uh, I don't know, I like it to look good. Yeah, you'll never see it. And uh, does it run better if it looks good? No, nope. I've uh, I've experienced that enough times. I just like to run my finger over it, and uh, let's turn this down just a hair. A little bit higher. Okay, I'm just smoothing it out. I like these because they're long and flat and they, uh, they'll get rid of any of those high spots. I just use my finger. Oh, that's nice now. Okay, let's do the other side. Smoothing my corners here. Now one thing I'm going to say when you're doing transfers, be careful when you're in your corners because sometimes the tool will kick up and you'll go across the plating. It does happen. Um, it usually won't go past the plating or anything. You'll you'll scuff plating sometimes. So just be aware of that. I just got to fix my tool here, guys. It started coming off. Be aware of that. Um, just be careful when you're in the corners because it can grab. It usually will grab on one side and not the other. Again, I'm using coarse grit because I don't want this to be smooth. I want it rough. I want to keep the fuel in suspension and I, I want it to stay atomized. That's the name of the game for this guy. Now remember, I move air for a living, so I, uh, I 
just use what I think the air will do from years of moving it at work and apply that to a two-stroke cylinder. ground are going to be sharp. I'm just going to go over them right now with this and then uh, I'll show you guys how to smooth everything at the end of the fork job. Pay particular attention to the edges or you will cut that piston to shreds when you run the saw. That's the most important thing to porting. Okay folks, there's our transfers. See one little spot I don't like. Again guys, you can go at this for hours if you want. Um, it's usually not going to make a difference in how the saw runs. I just like to get it to a level that if someone pulls the saw apart in years, they'll, uh, they'll admire your work. Isn't that what this is about? It's about craftsmanship. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. I know it's there. One more go at this side. Okay, we're going to blow this out and I'll... We're going to blow this thing out and I'll get you guys set up in the tripod. We can talk about what we just did. Okay guys, there's our finished transfers. Notice there's no sharp ridges, okay? It is a straight shot now. Now I decided I wanted to feed this back transfer a little bit more. Um, not much, but just, just enough to let it know that we love it and we want it to breathe a little bit better, okay? Feel everything with your finger. This is nice and consistent and it's not smooth. It's sanded with like an 80 grit sandpaper. Okay, these sides here, we will clean these up in a later video when we go around all the ports. Uh, run sandpaper around here and just smooth it out. Um, there you go. There's your lower transfers. Ready to go. Okay guys, that's transfer ports. Now, this is just what I decided to do on this saw. Uh, experiment a little, guys. Get the transfers to flow more air, okay? And uh, I think you'll be happy with the results. You could just do this and not change the transfers or the, uh, the exhaust port and intake port. This will only help, guys. You can't do any damage by doing this. I, you know, we had that. We had that sharp ledge to get into the transfers. Now we have this into the transfers. Every time air has to change directions, it slows down, okay? And uh, creates resistance. Now remember, this piston's going up and down so fast. We don't have a lot of time. So any way that we can help the cylinder flow is a good thing. So there you guys go. Porting transfers, grinding on them. Um, I'm really happy with how these turned out. And just take your time, guys. Take your time and and experiment and just and just smooth and steady. It doesn't matter if it takes you four weekends to port your cylinder. All that matters is that it runs good after. Um, get good and then get fast at grinding. Remember, light pressure, let the tool do the cutting. If it's too slow, uh, you're going to get chattery. If it's too fast, you're going to get too much heat. So find a happy medium with your tool and uh, I think you'll be happy. Okay. There you go. Grinding on a cylinder finally. Hope you guys enjoyed this. As always, thanks for coming here. Um, thanks for liking and subscribing. I appreciate you guys. And uh, we're going to keep going on the exhaust port and intake. 
As always, thanks for watching. Take her easy.